and in the mid range. <laughs> the bark of the exhaust. Hey crew, I've got the key. Which is really nice, by the way. This new design with the leather on both sides, that trident, it's very substantial in the hands. Anyway, to that 23 Maserati Grecale Trofeo. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. Up front, this new Grecale model. Where is that Maserati corporate grille, which on the Trofeo is blacked out? There's the trident right in the center, below another Maserati badge. And on the Trofeo, you get carbon fiber for the front splitter. There are functional inlets on the side to heat exchangers, and there are functional ducts to cool the front brakes and tires. This one is painted in blue intenso, which I think translates as a mild blue. No, I'm kidding, it's intense blue with metallic flake on the paint surface and a rich color. This model has the optional full matrix LED headlights with LED DRLs and turn signals. Now what's interesting about this headlight housing is that it's kind of tall as a proportion of the face, so it makes the vehicle seem almost bug-eyed to me. At the side, the Trofeo model gets a set of 21-inch two-tone alloy wheels wrapped in Bridgestone Potenza Sport tires, sized 255 section front and 295 at the rear. Within those wheels are drilled rotors clamped on by these yellow painted calipers as an option. There's carbon fiber for the side sill these three classic ports, Trofeo badge with a red background, body color for the door mirror caps, black gloss for the window trim, and for the optional roof rails. Stepping back to look at the profile, see a little Levante here, especially at that rear three quarter, but otherwise the profile is a bit unremarkable. Nothing about it is very emotive. As we get to the back though, things get very good because we've got the roof mounted spoiler. There's the trident here with red accenting on the pillar. I like the curve of these LED taillights with turn signals. And that's all above this awesome, large carbon fiber diffuser for the Trofeo with four exhaust outlets that I think would look better as individual pipes, not this trapezoidal housing thing. The rear end is definitely my favorite view. It's so planted and sporty, but the rest of the exterior doesn't really deliver the same message. What's one thing you would change about the exterior of the Grecale Trofeo? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up by sticking my hand inside the cutout and pressing on the pad to reveal a black leather interior with a standard panoramic sunroof and microfiber suede wrapped headliner. There's yellow contrast stitching, which I like both with the black and the blue of the exterior. The tridents stitched on the headrest are an option, but I think they're worth it. Just to rub your nose in the exclusivity. Perforations for the seat centers, available rear seat heating. On the doors, there's leatherette up top with contrast stitching. You get this woven carbon fiber trim on the Trofeo. Love the texture. There's a Sonus Faber 21 speaker sound system as an option. This ribbed design on the doors, leatherette with padding for your armrest, hard plastics down low, and a button to release the door, not a door handle. There's Maserati on the tread plate, and a release for the seat backs to fold down. Stepping in, behind my own seat, at six feet tall, I've got a good portion of knee room. The seat back is leatherette with padding. There's a good size map pocket, and big foot pockets to slide my feet under, helping with the thigh support. Headroom is also good. Head clears the roof. I can make it back to the headrest. Gets the thumbs up from me. There's a third zone of climate as standard. Rear air vents, two USB ports, 1A, 1C. The drive shaft hump isn't so large that you can't get over it, but here in the middle, my head is pressed against the roof. So it's gonna have to be a smaller middle passenger. Or if you don't have one, then there's an armrest that comes down with two cup holders and leather. Let's check out the front. Door closed noise. Like it, it's deep. Smart keel entry for the front two doors. The front seats are heated and ventilated as an option with power adjustments and four-way lumbar. They're 18-way power adjustable. You get the thigh extensions as well. Aluminum foot pedals as an option to release the trunk 
lean in here and press on that button. And it will reveal 20 cubic feet of space with these optional cargo rails to tie things down. A little bit of storage underneath the floor as well. To fold down the rear seats, you can pull on these two tabs and they will split fold. And while they don't fold all the way flat, I really appreciate the convenience of being able to release the seats from back here. There's a power close and lock button on the tailgate. The front doors are similar in design to the back, but with larger aluminum Sonus Faber speaker grills, power adjusting and power folding door mirrors. I looked here for seat memory and here for the light controls, but both of those things were actually found in the bottom portion of this infotainment screen setup. Stepping in, drivers are greeted to a leather wrap steering wheel that's heated as an option. The leather feel is kind of plasticky. It is made up for by the flat bottom, the start stop button, the drive mode, it's like the look of that. And more importantly, with these massive aluminum paddles, which have great action and the texture is wonderful. There's a digital instrument cluster that's reconfigurable. There's also a head up display, stitched leather on the dashboard, perforated leather beneath that, and a really neat interface that isn't just a clock. You can change it up down here giving you some different faces for the clock or having it be something else entirely like a compass, your power or brake pressure, or a G meter. That's adjusted on this lower eight inch screen that can also set your ambient lighting or raise or lower your air suspension or just function your HVAC controls. The graphics are sharp, it's really responsive. That's beneath your gear selection and that's under a more formal 12.3 inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Further down is a wireless charging pad. We've got some more of that woven carbon fiber covering. Storage with two USB ports, 1A, 1C. Two cup holders are here. We've got leather and contrast stitching on the console and inside is a decent bit of space with a DC outlet. Visibility is good up until you get to that back pillar. That's a pretty big blind spot. Thankfully, there's standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. The overwhelming experience in this cabin is dazzling. The designs, the stitching, the technology, only in a few places do they really apparently cheap out. It's so good. I'm ready. Let's take the Gricali Trofeo out for a drive. All right, let's fire it up with the button on the wheel. Why do buttons on the wheel always just thrill me? Makes it feel so much sportier. And the growl from that twin turbo V6 also sends that message. I am ashamed to admit, guys, how long it took me to find the gear selection keys. I was looking for a stock like Mercedes-Benz vehicles. I clearly had ruled out a gear selector here in the console. It just, they blend in so well, which is great for a seamless look, but for example, if you're going to uh, valet this vehicle, you might have to show the valet where these are. Otherwise, they'll be sitting there trying not to look dumb for like three minutes in my case. Okay, the drive mode is this dial here. And you can see we've got GT Comfort and off-road setting, which we're not gonna do today, but you can also see the air suspension adjustments for that. You've got three inches of adjustability from that air suspension and the off-road two mode jacks it up as high as possible. We are going to begin in the comfort mode. The GT is like your normal mode, but let's be as comfortable as possible. And Corsa we'll try out later. So here's reverse. I found it. And that's gonna bring up a high resolution camera system. And you've got your backup view with trajectory lines, your bird's eye view here. Super wide angle backup view, love that camera. And let's back on out of here. Into drive, and away we go. We'll kick things off with the world famous horn test. Yeah, that's a good horn. It fits this SUV. And then the turn signal sound is next. I 
don't know why, but that, that doesn't seem like it fits. A bit too clunky of a noise for such a posh SUV. One thing that does fit, this powertrain. So the standard Gricale uses a turbocharged four-cylinder, making between 295 horsepower and 325, depending on the trim level. But this Trofeo upgrades to a three-liter twin-turbocharged V6, making 523 horsepower and 457 pound-feet of torque. That power is routed through an eight-speed torque converter automatic and sent to all four tires. Even in the comfort mode, there's a nice little growl from the twin turbo V6. The transmission is smooth. It's not the smoothest torque converter automatic I've ever driven. You can distinctly feel some of those gear changes, especially at lower speeds as you're coming up to speed. The power delivery is nice and linear in comfort. The throttle response is relaxed. The seats are ergonomic, contour nicely to my body. That's going to be a lot of traffic coming back. <laughs> Lots of adjustability to the seats as well. For me, I'd prefer if they could lower ever so slightly more than they do, and the steering wheel could raise up more than it does. But gosh, if this isn't a pleasant way to get around. The ride quality from this adaptive damper setup with air springs is excellent. Dampens you from those road imperfections. It's compliant over undulations in the road surface. And the cabin stays pretty quiet at higher speeds. A light brush of wind noise. A mellow hum from the tires. And some chugging from that powertrain at low RPM. That's, that's all. The NVH level is low. You can have a quiet conversation with your passengers. No need to raise your voice. I'm pleasantly surprised by how agreeable the Gricale Trofeo is as a daily driver, as a commuter. And now to demo the turning radius, fully cranked. Pivots around nicely. Kind of expect that from a small SUV, but it's not a remarkably tight turn. And now, I must bear the burden of finding a real-world 0-60 to test for the Gricale Trofeo. For that, I've got my race box set up over here because I was not getting any reception up on the front glass. I now move into the Corsa drive mode, and that bids access to launch control. The way you do that is you pull in on the right paddle and then click once more to confirm Hold your foot on the brake, pin the throttle, let go of the brake, and you're off to the races. All right, here we go. Pulling in the right paddle, then confirming once more, pinning the throttle, letting it go. Woo! 3.86 seconds to 60? That's ripping! And in the mid range, <laughs> the bark of the exhaust on the upshift and how readily the, the transmission will downshift when I just plant my foot. Hasty! The Trofeo is not messing around. Let's try manual mode. Oh, I just love actuating these paddles. They're so good. Nice quick shifts. 
And I love that bark every time. The sound of that exhaust, the responsiveness of this engine and transmission, and the tactile delight of these paddles just fully elevates the driving experience of the Gricale Trofeo. And playtime's not over yet because in the course of drive mode, we've got stability control switched off so you can really explore the limits of the Gricale Trofeo's performance under hard braking and hard cornering. So carrying speed, clamp it on those brakes, full ABS, decent stop there. Turn in, it's nice and quick. It does want to plow the nose. Lifting off the throttle will pull it back in. And the limited slip differential will get the power down. Some good, some bad. The bad. It absolutely wants to plow the nose. And the only way to heal that is not with additional power. It's with pulling off the throttle. The good. The dampers had firmed up quite a lot, so we weren't having a lot of lean in the corner. And as we were exiting the curb, I was able to get on the power and the differential in the back could distribute it, get it to the ground and scuttle us out. And to recap on the braking, there's good initial bite and I like the feel of the pedal. It just seems that at higher speed, we don't quite have the stopping force I'm looking for. Steering is light but precise meaning that there's good buildup of resistance as I turn the wheel so that I can telegraph a curve with precision and now as I pop out of course of drive mode heading into the GT mode and activating the adaptive cruise control with steering assistance which isn't really a hands-free system. I'm just demonstrating how it stays in the center of the lane. Looks good. No deviations off the highway. And now let's talk about the miles per hour word of the day, which corresponds to the two traits of driving behavior for this SUV I've most appreciated. The word is tactile, and it means a sense of touch. And the two things I've loved most have been the feel of these massive aluminum paddles, their actuation, and the sense of feel from the steering wheel. Well, everything except for this plasticky sound uh, for the leather rim. But the feel of feedback and the feel of the paddles are wonderful. They're traits that invite you into the driving experience, and I'm easy. If the vehicle has tactile qualities, I'm pretty much sold. But that's not all there is to the Gricali. It also is a pleasant daily driver. It's quiet, it's comfortable. The cabin is exquisitely luxurious, but all that doesn't come cheap. The starting figure for the Gricali Trofeo is $104,000 and this one as tested is $117,000. I'll jog back for a second talk fuel economy. It's 18 mpg in the city, 25 on the highway and 20 combined. The top speed is 177 miles per hour. How do those specs stack up against competitor? Other options in this high performance small SUV segment include the Porsche Macan GTS which starts at about $84,000. It makes 434 horsepower, gets to 60 in three and a half seconds, has a top speed of 169 miles per hour and fuel economy of 19 combined. There's the BMW X3 M competition that starts at about $81,000. It makes 503 horsepower, gets to 60 in just 3.3 seconds, has a top speed of 161 miles per hour and fuel economy of only 16 combined. And finally, there's the stablemate, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, which starts at about eighty-seven or eighty-eight thousand dollars. It makes five hundred and five horsepower, gets to sixty, also in three point three seconds, like that X3M competition. Has a top speed of one hundred and seventy-seven, one hundred seventy-six miles per hour, because they couldn't have the Alfa Romeo have the exact same top speed 
as the Maserati and the fuel economy is 19 combined. Among those, the BMW X3M competition, I have to rule out simply because the ride quality is so firm, I couldn't live with that every single day. The Stelvio Quad, that's very compelling for less money than this vehicle, but the interior of the Gracali is so much better that I can forgive the fact that it doesn't look quite so enticing on the front and profile views because that rear shot does look very, very good. I think it's worth that extra money over the Stelvio. The Porsche Macan GTS though, that remains my number one because the driving dynamics are so good. It's so flat through corner. The steering is so transparent and the performance is absolutely there in a straight line as well while looking like a more cohesive package than even the Krakali Trofeo, but the interior is not even close to on the same caliber. So this is firmly in second place for me in this segment. And if you've got the extra money, and if you appreciate all of the Italian design flair and the great technology, then there's nothing wrong at all with the Krakali Trofeo. Very impressed with this vehicle, much more so than I expected coming into this one. Which would you guys choose? Would you go Maserati? Would you go Porsche? Would you go BMW? Or would you go Alfa Romeo? Let me know in the comments, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And I'll see you next time. Yes!